I'm Mark and welcome to uh, Value View Retreat. Uh, today I'm going to change this rear tyre and I'm going to change the uh, brake pads on this. Uh, I took a, a fall last week as a result of a particularly bald front tyre. I've already done the front tyre. Uh, I did record that for you but uh, unfortunately there was no sound so I'm hoping that this one will actually work. So. Let's start off by taking this uh, rear tire off. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is undo the quick release. Yeah, it's easy enough. And then I've got to get the, uh, the chain out of the, the way of these cogs. So what I'm going to do is pull this back and out of the way. Just lift. And simple as that to release the wheel. Do this, the dust cap, and I'm going to put the dust cap in my pocket because yesterday when I was doing the front tire, I took the dust cap off and now I can't find it. I don't know what I did with it. So I'm just going to take one of these on wrenches. Release the pressure here. Uh, this tire is a 20, 26, um, and you can see it was a pretty good, pretty good tire, um, and it hasn't given me any trouble. I haven't had a, a puncture in it, but it wasn't really designed for the sort of terrain that I'm covering at the moment, and. Um, <coughs> And it is fairly worn in the center, so it's time for a change. Originally this bike came with, uh, I'm going to be using the tire levers for this. Originally this bike came with a 26 by 2.1, and that's what I've got on the front. Um, however, this is actually a 26 by 2 and I'm going to replace it with a 26 by 2 not because I think it's any better, but because when I went to the shop and I bought these in Decathlon but uh, when I went to the shop they had one uh, 26 by 2.1 and one of the 26 by 2 so I've replaced the 26 2.1 on the front with another exactly the same and I'm going to replace this rear one with a, a 26 by 2 I don't know if that made any sense to you at all but basically they didn't have two 2.1s so this is what I'm going to change okay so we've broken the bead now we need to just undo the tie around. So once you break the bead, it's quite easy. Now, the next thing to do is take the tube out. There hasn't been a problem with this tube, to my knowledge, not since I've had the bike. So I've left it slightly inflated. Well, having said that, there's a patch there. So. Obviously there was a problem with it at some stage and there must be another one here because yeah it's sticking there again okay so this tube has one two two patches in it but it hasn't been going soft should I replace the tube well currently we're in phase two of the coronavirus lockdown and I haven't had any work since uh, I haven't had any wedding work since um, last October you can see that tire how worn it is in places so it's definitely time for a change uh, as I say I haven't had any work since last October so <coughs> if uh, I don't have to spend the money on a new tube I won't now let's put this one in it's not as if changing the tube is all that difficult uh, okay, so just have a look at this. This is what I'm replacing it with. It's a Michelin Country Trail 
26 by 2. And you can see it's pretty good um, and it's a fairly thick fairly thick tire so I'm hoping that it will work. Boy that's not easy. There we go. And off. Take the band off. Uh, here we are. So the first thing we're checking to see is if there's a, a rotation mark on it. Tell you which way the tire is supposed to turn, which will tell me which way to put it on. They don't all have them, depending on the tread uh, pattern. And no, I'm not seeing a rotation direction. And that's it. Let's have a look on the other side. Yes, it says a front or a rear. So, for the rear, let me see if I can figure this out. Yo. For the rear, uh, it's going in that way. So, I'll go in that way. Uh, when the bike's run, I run that direction. So, rear. Yes, so this is the correct way. Okay, so we'll put one side in. It shouldn't be too difficult. The next thing is with a partially inflated tube because we want to prevent it from being pinched when we put the tire on. We put that in. That's where it should be. Now we've got to get this tire on without pinching the tube. So I'm going to try and gather the tube as we put it in. I find the first part of this relatively easy. going to start getting more difficult so the tire lever I'm being very careful not to pinch the tube so staying very close to the edge push that in yeah, we're still doing okay I reckon oh wonderful okay now lever backwards and forwards quite a bit and make sure if the tube is pinched between the bead and the wheel that we're giving it a, enough space to pop out. And I'm going to partially inflate. Take this when it's done 
I'll be taking it up to about 30 to 35 psi. That's where I like to use it, and I think 30 is the minimum for this. I'll do. Put the dust cap back on. Okay, and that's pretty much done. But before I uh, put it back on, put that over there out of the way. Put these back together. And I'm missing one. Where it went, I don't know. I'll find it. Okay. But yeah, as I was saying before, put that back on. Oh, like this. And this. And I'll, uh, while it's off, just give it a bit of a, a clean. I can see that there's yeah, a piece of grass and stuck in there and although these things don't seem like much they accelerate the wear and a new cassette is not a cheap thing and it's not just the cassette obviously it's the chain and while chains on a normal bike are not a a big deal uh, in terms of cost for uh, an electric bike, they're considerably more expensive. And, uh, and if a chain should break when you're putting a lot of power through the pedal going up a hill on loose ground, uh, you can end up in a pretty hairy situation. So it's worth keeping these clean. I do have some um, degreaser. I'm not going to use it right now. That's all I needed because it was degreased not so long ago. Um, I'm going to give her a little bit of a little bit of oil. Because why wouldn't you? It's off. Okay. Right. Now I feel better about putting that in. So our next order of business is the brake discs. The brake pads, rather, not the discs. So, here's the pads. And I'm going to need something to uh, lever. Pads out. Okay, so, here's your, your brake pad. Here. And you can see that's very worn. So, what I'm going to have to do is to pinch this. Need to find something to do that with. Here. So this is a, a split pin. What my grandfather used to call a cutter pin. And do that like that. Put the cutter pin to one side. And now I'm going to take these out. And you can see how worn they are. They've been making noise. I mean, that one is right down to the bare metal. Really shouldn't allow them to get that bad. Okay, so let's take this one out.
So that's the way it'll go in and uh, surprisingly enough, despite the fact that this was very expensive, it didn't actually come with a fresh cutter pin, so I'm going to have to use the old one, the split pin. Well, before you can put this in, you're going to have to lever back the uh, the pots, the hydraulics pots. So you need to get something in there to lever those back into the frame. And if I'm being perfectly honest, that's not... That's better. That's still not... Right, we're gonna need something with a bit more... More oomph. There we go. Okay, you can see that slid back into the frame. These in here. No, oh, that's not right. Okay, like that. You can see this spring is designed to push these out so that they don't remain in contact with the disc the whole time the bike is running because the last thing you'd want is that amount of friction on the disc it would wear both the disc and the pad out so when you're not on the brake it's trying to keep the discs away the the pads away from the disc so we've got the split pin in now we've got to split the pin here so that it doesn't come out and that's what holds the discs in. Now, our next issue is going to be getting the disc in between those pads. I'm going to use something soft to try and open them a bit more. Okay. See what happens when we put the two air in. Okay, so now I've got to do the opposite of what we did to get it in. So Up. Make sure that when we finally do use this lever to cinch it, that uh, it's pointing in a direction that isn't going to get caught in branches and undo itself. So this one needs to be pointing backwards. Okay, so far, it'll find its correct gear. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. You can see there's still some tension on that brake. It'll take a little while to settle down. There's a bit more uh, friction there than I'd actually like. Or we'll oil the chain while we're here. And some of the other little bits. There we go. Good. So I'll put these away. And uh, now I'm going to check 
to make sure that this is in fact tight and it is and check the front one that I did the other day and it's not so that's better on that one that's good and looking at that brake I don't know if you can see that but there's still uh, there's still some meat left on that one so not a big deal and now that we've got it upside down may as well take some of this crap off Okay, I'm going to turn her over. And give it a bit of a, a whirl. Hello, little doggy. Okay, feels good. Let's check that rear brake. Very little. It needs to wear in, bed in a little bit. Getting better. Getting better again, okay. It'll take a little while. But all in all, that job's done. We've been putting everything away. Uh, that's um, rear tire replaced, the uh, cassette cleaned, and the rear brake pads changed over, and everything tightened up and tested. I hope you found some of that useful. Take care. Bye bye.